Our topic today is going to be a basic introduction to using the logic analyzer function in the analog discovery 2 and that always involves the waveform software that runs the USB based device. First an introduction to a logic analyzer. A lot of people might not know what it does. Um, usually when we pick up a scope or a logic analyzer um, what we want to do is have a visual indication of the signals and technicians look at the shapes and the way the the way the signals look and how they're affected and that's what gives them an idea of what the problems are and in the analog world you would use an oscilloscope or a DSO digital storage oscilloscope to do that and the DSO is a great tool um, they're very accurate uh, fairly expensive uh, piece of test equipment but it only has two to four channels and when we look at a logic circuit in the digital world uh, with a microcontroller in it um, our data buses are 8, 16, or 32 bits and we want to see all those signals at one time and we can't do that on a on a digital storage oscilloscope so um, there is another piece of a test called a logic analyzer it just uh, picks up and displays digital signals um, square waves that are centered on zero volts and you can see a lot of those at the same time and you can interpret all those waveforms but also too they'll let you group them or bus those signals together and look at eight bits at a time and it'll interpret them to like an ASCII signal or the gray code that it's representing so a logic analyzer has a lot of channels uh, has some limitations that um, you don't have on a, a digital storage oscilloscope and certainly you can look at digital signals on a digital storage oscilloscope but the disadvantage is you can only look at a small amount of them at the same time uh, the logic analyzers also uh, have uh, waveform displays so that you can see the signals or they group them together to interpret them for things like ASCII characters and different things like that. So that gives us a good introduction. Um, let's go dig right into the software that's used for the analog discovery, uh, the waveform software, and get the logic analyzer up here and running. So I have the software started. I'm going to click on the logic function and it's going to bring up the logic analyzer tab. And um, I really have to have, I always like to have something to play with to do and do an actual thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this circuit uh, that I have here on the screen. And it's a simple circuit. It's really just a four input AND gate, but uh, you can't find those ICs. So I took a number of two input AND gates and put them in a configuration that would they would give me a four input AND gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply signals to these four inputs and I'm going to measure this output. So the logic analyzer is going to have leads attached to here, 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 and this output in the circuit. And this uh, analog discovery too is a nifty piece of equipment at the same time it can generate waveforms to exercise the circuit. So I'm going to put a pattern of binary counter inputs on here that I generate um, so that we can see it exercised and then we'll be able to take a look at the output to make sure it's doing the end function that's there. Okay so uh, let's open up another tab for the pattern generator. I go over here to the plus and I scroll down and pick the pattern generator we have another video that talks about that and the basic video will cover everything you need here I want to generate those four signals uh, and I want to do them as a group so I'm gonna say I'm gonna add a bus to that and this bus is gonna include channels 0 through 4 or 0 through 3 on the analog discovery 2 and I'm gonna add that everything else is gonna stay pretty much um, 
on the configuration going to stay pretty much standard. Remember, I had to change my output type to push-pull. And I don't want a constant value here. I want a binary counter output waveforms. And it nicely generates those signals for me. And we're ready to go, except the pattern isn't generated and started. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to start it. I'm going to come back to the Logic Analyzer window by clicking on that tab. And I'm going to switch the window over just so you can see what this looks like. There's not going to be anything exciting that we can see, uh, but it is nice to see how it's hooked up. Um, this is the two input AND gate uh, circuits. There's a number of them connected together with these yellow wires to implement the schematic that we showed you uh, just a little bit ago. And you can see here our channel 0, 1, 2, and 3 going to the inputs of that circuit. And here's channel 4 from the analog discovery to hooking to the output of that circuit. And the schematic that we had up before showed us how to do that. I hooked that up previously. There's nothing to see here. If I troubleshot this, if it was bad, it would look the same way as it would look good. So we have our test equipment hooked up so that we can see it. And obviously, simple circuit, but we need to see five signals at one time. A digital storage oscilloscope couldn't handle that. So we go back to the software. Um, we'll get our logic analyzer set up. We have to add channels to our logic analyzer. And the first set of channels, I want to add them as a group because I want to see a summary of the signals. So I'm going to select bus. And we already know what channels those are, 0 through 3, the first four. So I shift select those, and I add them to here, and up comes a waveform. And it's going to show us the signals that I had stored previously, the ones that are still in memory, and do it. Uh, by the way, I've also took the liberty of changing this um, triggering. This is the trigger point down here, and this is going to trigger when it sees all zeros uh, for the input signals. So if I could take a capture and when I hit the signal uh, single thing, what it's going to do is it's going to fill memory up with data that it collects from the circuit. So it collected data from the circuit. Um, it just so happened that it was the same data that it was before. And when I click that once, it's going to fill up memory and it does it very quickly. Uh, there is another option with the um, Analog Discovery 2 Logic Analyzer uh, to continuously run this. And you can see this is con uh, collecting enough data to fill memory and then doing it again and again and again. So I'm going to stop that because I like the single um, capture, especially when I'm learning and doing something. So I see all the inputs. They're really just measuring them from how I generated from the pattern generator, but they are being put on the input of the IC, too. What I don't see is the output. So i got to add another signal here. Uh, this time I'm only going to add a signal because I want to see the output. I have to add the correct one. I had the output um, from the analog discovery, too. I've got that as channel 4, and that's the one I have to choose. And... I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to double-click on that name just to change it to be more descriptive to Output. I'm going to hit the Enter key, and you can see it here. So now when I hit Single Collect, I, it doesn't look like anything happened, but it went out and collected uh, information from the circuit again. It collected all my inputs in a group, and it collected my outputs in here. So. The way to interpret the output of a logic analyzer is to look at the signals for any specific time. And this, this axis here is time, and this is the voltage level of the signal that you're collecting at this point. So you notice if I go up here, all these signals on the input are zero, and then the end gate would give me a zero output when that happens. This is a nice little summary up here in the top that takes all four input signals and groups them together and shows them to me in decimals. So I can see my counters working because it counts the way up to 15 and starts back at zero. That's 16 different states, and that's working fine. 
um, I do want to check my output to see whether it's working. And I'll notice when this input is high and all the rest are low, that's representing a 1 in decimal. And if it's an AND gate, that's going to give me a zero output because the only time the output is going to be high is when all the inputs are high. So we keep on stepping down through here on each of these different times that we're sampling these signals um, that we have our, our Analog Discovery 2 Logic Analyzer channels hooked up to. And I'm sampling all these signals and it's saying zero, 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 zero until I get down here. And this is when the time where all these signals go high at one time, which is decimal 15, uh, just a binary conversion, binary to decimal. And our uh, logic analyzer software is helping us do that. Um, and you can see the output is high. So if I was a technician, I hooked this up, I captured the data, I looked at it, I thought maybe I had a suspicion that this gate wasn't working correctly. I would look at it and I would say, oh no, it is working correctly. Nice thing too is I know it's working correctly for every single possible combination because the binary counter waveforms apply all possible combinations from the truth table on there and I know that it's working. And that's our quick introduction to a logic analyzer. Remember, a bunch of channels, digital signals only. If you put 12 volts on one of these inputs, you're probably going to burn it up. Um, it, but it does pretty much the same function as a, a oscilloscope or a DSO. Uh, it just gives you a lot more channels and only works in the digital world.